Okay, this thing's uh, I'm using this live unlive because I'm trying to teach you a little something. Okay, I'm gonna tell you quick. I'm gonna tell you a little story here, and then uh, if you're in a emergency situation right now that you have an alternator situation going on, you're wanting to get right to the point. Feel free to fast forward a little bit here until I get to the point where I show you my alternator. So, all right, here's the thing. So I'm on the back road just back here chilling this is a back row story i guess <laughs> this guy comes up and he knocks on my door and i'm sleeping and he's like oh man i'm sorry to bother you because i know i look disheveled like i just woke up have you know t-shirt on whatever i'm like no nah, man it's all right hell i should have got up 15 minutes before that you know and my alarm had already went off i was being lazy you know so i needed to get up no big deal right so anyhow and he felt bad about it. He's a kind of an older guy. He was wearing these um, he was wearing these coveralls that are like somebody would wear in the shop. These tan ones and a jacket and everything. He was dressed for the weather. It's real cold, you know. Anyway, um, that water on the ground was ice last night. It's gonna be ice again tonight. So anyway, um, and people be careful on the roads. But anyway, so he's a. Uh, you know, he's telling me, he's he says, listen, man, he says, I'm over here at AutoZone, and uh, he says, uh, you know, my, my truck has got a, it's just a pickup truck, you know, he says, my, my truck's got a bad alternator on it. Maybe he said car, I think he said truck. Anyway, I just woke up. So, he says, I'm $15 shy of getting another alternator. And I'm like, okay, well, um, I, I can't help you with that. And the first thing I thought of was, Look, when somebody asks me for money, I usually want to offer them food. If it's a bum, I say, well, what you really need some food, I'll give you the food. A can of, you know, beef stew or something, you know. Make the world a better place. Can't nobody go starving when they ask for food, right? So, anyhow, he didn't need that. He actually needed an alternator. So, I got ready to start my day. And he goes over to another truck next to me, and he goes to another one. By the time I'm ready to go... I look over and he's still, you know, walking the parking lot, but he's fixing to walk back towards his, his I guess, his vehicle up there on the uh, on the hill. I told him, I said, hey, come here for a minute. He came over. I says, uh, look, man, do do you seriously, dude, do you really have a bad alternator? He says, yeah, it's over there. All the time. I'm like, okay, look, if you've almost got enough money for an alternator, and that's probably a couple hundred, 160 to 260, I said, uh, you've got enough to give them $9 or $12 or 14 or whatever it is for a set of brushes. Look, I told him, I said, most times, 99% of the time on a car, it's the brushes. Unless you have tried to download an 18-wheeler worth of 4,000 cranking amp batteries by trying to jump start a battery, it's only going to be, um, you know, likely the brushes. The brushes wear out. So I told him, I said, look. What you do is this. You, they have them in the back. They're hiding them at AutoZone. And that's perfect because I know they have them. And they'll even loan you the tools to do them. And they'll even help you do them on the back bench, even though they're really not supposed to. They will. But they'll loan you the tools to do them. You don't really need a bench. You know, put it on the curb. But I told him you take the front half of the alternator. It's only like three or four bolts. The front casing away from the back casing, you pull them apart when you take those bolts apart. Now, I'm going to show you that in a second under my hood. It's just kind of cold outside. I want to tell the story and then get to it. So I'm staying warm for a second. So forgive me for that, people. But look, it's cold outside. So anyways, I told him, look, just make sure that when you do, that this is something you don't know. Most people, you know, that hadn't done it will have to learn this trick. You got to use a paper clip. You put the paper clip in the hole in the back of the alternator when you go to put it back together so that the new brushes are held back from the shaft and that the shaft, when you put it back together, doesn't break the brand new brushes you just put in the dang thing, right? Okay. So he goes over there, fixes his alternator. Can't believe it. Oh my God, it's magical. It's not magical. Listen, um, Delco alternators, you know, uh, I guess you call it, say Delco Remy or, um, you know, uh, Bosch, if they're rebuilding, whoever's rebuilding, you don't buy a new alternator, people. You buy a used alternator that's been rebuilt by a person, not an alien, 
not an octopus, not somebody with 10 hands, no, nobody special. You can learn how to do this, people. So if you are currently stuck and broke down, listen to me, you can do this, okay? You can do this. Um, you take the bolts out of the alternator, you pull it apart, the brushes are in the very back of it. If you think of the front face being the pulley and the back being the back, okay? Now keep this in mind. All right, before you take it apart, make sure you mark the alternator. It's, it's a good idea to mark it so that it's clocked correctly. In other words, so that the wire that plugs in to charge the battery of your car, okay, is in the up or down or however the wire plug plugs into it position because that wire might not reach too far if you have it clocked 180 degrees out of uh, out of the way it's supposed to be clocked in other words if it's twisted the wrong way when you put it back together you want the plug to be in the same position as it was before when you mount it all right there's a long bolt on the alternator and a short bolt on the alternator that's it one long bolt in the bottom a short adjustable uh, kind of a bolt at the top, maybe one other one. Usually, well, there's three. Um, disconnect your batteries first. But I just thought, you know, disconnect your batteries, take your alternator off, go rebuild it, you know? So the guy that goes and does that, he's like, oh my God, you just saved me. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know. You know, <laughs> it's what I do. So people, if you're stuck in the middle of nowhere, and let's just say they don't have an alternator, okay? Or here's an even bigger tip. Let's say they have an alternator, but it's clocked for a different vehicle as yours. This is what you need to know. You need a paper clip. Because when you go to clock it, if you pull it apart too far, and you probably will, the brushes will come off the shaft, and then when you go push it back together, it'll break them brushes right off, and you'll barely know you did it. So, uh, and I even handed him a paper clip. I said, here, here, and here's your paper clip. I gave him a paper clip. He went over there, like I said, he, he fixed it. He came back, he's like, oh my God, I ain't believing it. That's just kind of, he's older than me. And then I talked to a truck driver in this truck stop. And I said, hey, man. I said, I just helped this guy. I told him the story. He's like, you know, he says, I didn't even know how to do that. I'm like, okay. So I need to tell this. So people, it's nothing magical. It's nothing special. It's just a part. You're just changing parts. It's kind of like surgery. Kind of like when I, you know, took that light apart. <coughs> way easier than that light by the way i would give this on a scale of one to ten of ten being the hardest thing you could do and one being the easiest <clears throat> once you got the alternator off the car you know alternator taking it off the car or the truck is difficult but uh now on 18 wheelers i don't know if you can get brushes for an 18 wheeler i have not checked i need to check a ta i'll put it in the comments you know what i'm saying i'll throw some stuff together for you but i want to put the knowledge out right now that if especially if you're in a car <clears throat> they have them. Let me take a drink real quick. I'm sitting here talking. Anyhow, I hope everybody's doing good. I hope you're not broke down. But if you are, or if you know somebody that needs to know this knowledge, share my little video. You know, share, share the knowledge and go further. Take what I know and go further. You know, invent a way to get off this planet before the sun burns it up. Do something better. Don't spend your time having to learn the crap I already know. You know what I mean? People stand. This is called standing on your shoulders of geniuses, in case you don't know, right? If I stand on the shoulders of genius, okay, and I can see further than him, there's nothing wrong with that, okay? So, there you go. It's a Eastern philosophy. There's nothing wrong with giving somebody a leg up in the world. Because contrary to popular belief, you can't pull yourself up by your bootstraps. It's impossible. Go look that shit up about what they used to say about that. Don't even get me started on that. No human can possibly pull themselves up by their own bootstraps. You used to have to have bootstraps on boots? Yeah, so learn a little something about that. You know what that was? That was hate, okay? If you don't have hate and you help people, you're better off than the people that spout that kind of crap. So I'm telling you right now, take this and go further and help people. So I'm gonna teach you this. I'm gonna show something real quick. Boy, it gets me hot. That gets me angry. That really does. I ain't gonna lie to you, people. People that hold people back and don't help people, golly, don't get me started on some mess. All right, people, so I'm starting my day. Hope everybody's doing good. I'm fixing to show you the alternator and a couple things I was talking about. Hell, I done gave away my good paper clip. 
<laughs> I gave the man my best paper clip. I got a smaller one though, it's a little pink thing. I'll show it. I'll kind of give you a better idea, but back to what I was saying, make sure you put in the paper clip before you put the two pieces back together to hold back the new brushes from the shaft. And make sure that when you do put it together, after you're done, you pull that paper clip straight out. You're gonna open the paper clip and make it like a piece of wire, except for a little L shape that you can hold with your hand. Do you get what I'm saying, people? Maybe it's long enough to do that. You might need most of it. So there's a hole in the back of the thing designed just for that. No lie. So uh, let's check out my alternator. I'll uh, show you something real quick. Now, that's another thing too, by the way. 18 wheelers, they usually burn up the batteries. I mean, I mean the bearings. They usually burn up the bearings or, sorry, or the voltage regulator will go bad and it will try to burn up, it'll, it'll put so much power out it'll go crazy. You'd be putting out like, you know, hell, 17 volts, 16 and a half volts and stuff, that's bad. You start putting out 16 volts, you shut your truck off. In case you don't know that, by the way, you have a gauge on your dash, you're supposed to be watching that, people, just like you watch the temperature. Every once in a while, take a look and see how many volts you're getting, because for real people, you need to be putting out 12.5 to 14.7 volts, no more. You know what I'm saying? Really, 14 is what it's cranking at, but what you'll actually show is your power, what you get. If you get in, like, if you start to show 13 volts on that meter, it's only supposed to show 12, 12 and a half, something like that, you got something overcharging, especially with 4,000 crank amp batteries. And if you smell something smoking, that's when you want to change it. You don't just keep driving it. Matter of fact, cut the belt if it's just an alternator. Uh, but usually these serpentine belts run everything else too, so that's a problem too. You know what I mean? Um, like the other day, the tensioner pulley. The tensioner pulley also runs the water pump. Kind of need that. You know, you don't want to overheat it. Anyways, I'll find out about the brushes at TA, but I did notice this. The alternator, let me get back on subject. I went to a rant. The alternator on this truck, these newer trucks are smaller alternators. And I looked at them sideways when I first saw them. I'm like, what is that about? That's a car alternator. That's a half alternator. Maybe they're making smaller alternators that have to do a bigger job. I know the ones that were for like a 90s model Freightliner were huge. They had probably better bearings in them. I'm a little worried that these are going to be crappy alternators. I'm hearing of them going out at 400,000 miles. So usually the bearing goes out and it'll shoot it forward and throw a belt. But if that didn't happen, and if you're not putting out too much voltage, you have no voltage, nine times out of 10, it's those brushes. So let's get into that real quick. I'll get off my duff and <clears throat> take y'all outside, show you my alternator. Because if I don't show an alternator in this video, somebody's gonna give me a hard time. Now, I don't have to change mine right quick, but I just saved that dude on his. So, and plus I'm charging my battery and staying warm. But anyway, so I'm gonna bend this paper clip out straight. I'm gonna show you something real quick on this paper clip. Let me find my camera. You see how I got the paper clip right there? That's your magic tool. That's what makes it so you can magical put brushes in an alternator. It's kind of like rebuilding an alternator, but now keep in mind, you still got an old voltage regulator and old bearings. So now you want to go get one after this as soon as you can. It'll probably last you another couple years, but as soon as you can, and that will be your spare because it works. But this is this is what you do with a paper clip and you stick it in the back. I'll show you where it goes. That way I ain't gonna carry a paper clip with me. Hold tight people, let's go for a little walk about. Unplug this, get this thing started. Maybe it won't be too loud. I'm just unhooking my hood now. This guy's parked right next to me. On top of me, he nosed in. I hate that. Anyway, let's see if we can't show a little something. All right. Mine is a bigger one, but you might have a smaller one. So let me show you that real quick. So that you understand what I'm talking about. We are currently on the passenger side of the vehicle. There's your turbo boot and your turbo boot clamp. Okay, for the air-to-air -air cooler. Just like I've been teaching you, you gotta keep spares of these. I, I ain't gonna tell that enough. There's a turbo, I showed how to change one of them the other day. All right, check this out. This is your alternator. Now this is a full-size one. Some of them smaller ones I've seen, I'm, I'm a little leery of them things, okay? 
This one is the bigger one that I trust for like ever. And check it out, Delco Remy. A little shout out to Delco Remy and everybody at Bosch. Just so y'all know, I appreciate what y'all do, but I'm trying to teach people not to be on the side of the road, so y'all get it too, right? Let's still buy your brushes. Let's see. Uh, if I can get in here. I'm trying to turn it sideways so you can see the tag. It says Delco Remy. There we go. Okay, see that Delco Remy? They pretty much rebuilt all of them. I hadn't even looked at this thing. You know what I mean? So, I don't know if they have a brush for this, okay? However, you know, you see how this has got a ground right here, a little extra wire. This is a plug in the back. I wonder if I got a flashlight so I can show this, but okay. This type of alternator will be different than a car. So I'm just gonna have to tell you it's it's it is a little bit different, but uh this bolt right here, this is what holds the front to the back. This bolt goes through here into the back. I'm gonna need a flashlight for this one, people. Um and I'm gonna actually have to figure out where that hole is. It's somewhere in the center back here is that hole. Okay, on the car, it doesn't have a thousand holes. It's just got one place to put in for the brush. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna, we're just gonna say, if this is on your car, it's gonna look different. It won't have two bolts in here. This is how you take it off of off the 18 wheeler. I wanted to show this. It makes it easier for us. What you got, is a bolt up here that's on a adjustment to pull the belt to pull the belt up okay it'd be one bolt here to, so that you can take it off take off the one on the bottom take off the third bolt you won't have a ground but 18 wheelers do you won't have all this mess you're going to have one like this i'm going to keep that covered i don't know okay um you're going to have one like this and you're going to have a plug this takes two separate ones in case you're doing this on an 18-wheeler. Let's see if I can get this. Okay, look, if I can get in here. Yeah, I got my sunglasses off now, I can see it, okay. This is the one you're gonna have when you're when you're in a car. It's gonna be smaller like this. For this 18-wheeler, you got two like this, but on a car, you're gonna have a, a two-post. Instead of this, you're gonna have a two-post and a plug. That's why you gotta get it clocked right. When you pull that plug out, that wire loom only reaches to here. Okay, so clocking it means the front cover, when you take the bolts out and take it away to the back cover, make a mark here, make a mark here, and you'll be good. When you put it back together, make sure those marks line up. Now, on the brush, I can't show it on this one, but on your car, you'll see that there's a little bitty hole towards the center of this thing that you're going to put that paper clip in. Not when you take it apart, only when you put it back together. The way you're going to see it is when you take it apart, you'll see where the brushes are. You reach your finger in and push the brushes back. They're spring-loaded, the old ones, and put a paper clip in that hole, and it holds them back. And then you'll say, oh, that's how it works. Then you swap the brushes out, put the paper clip back on it, and put the back half to the front half. So on the alternator, you should have these kind of bolts. It'll be like one, two, three, or one, two, three, four on a car. And they'll be right here will be the nut. I mean the, the bolt, the head of the bolt. It'll be like right here. So you just unscrew this very long bolt. It'll be like three or four of them. And uh, it's, it's not that difficult. But they do have brushes in the back of AutoZone that they don't tell you about because they want to sell you a new alternator. You probably don't need a new alternator. If you buy one that's clocked wrong where the plug doesn't plug up, you can take it apart just like I said, put the pin in the back, hold back the brushes, put it and, and turn the front face so it's clocked right and put it together. And then you don't have to wait two days for all minute. So there you go, people. I hope that was helpful. I wanted to show doing one, but I pretty much told him how to do it and he did it and then everybody didn't know. So I don't know. Um, Y'all stay safe. I hope this was helpful. Share my video. That's all I got for you. I'm out. Peace.